What is going on everyone? It's Brody back again with another tennis topic and today's tennis topic is going to be talking about what is beam width in tennis rackets. Now if you've been playing tennis for a while or you're brand new you may know that tennis rackets come in all different shapes and sizes. Now you have some that are thicker than other tennis rackets, you have some that are thinner, you have some that are longer and everything but what we're going to focus on today is talking about how thick or how thin your racket is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through what a, I found a thick beam does for a tennis racket, what a thin beam does, and then usually a few ranges to look at whether or not you're seeing a thin beam racket, an average beam racket, or a thick beam racket. And then at the end, I'll explain everything that's kind of going on, what you may find with using these, as well as just kind of wrap it all up going back to these and why you may wanna use each style of racket. So let's get started. So the first thing up here with thicker beams is that they are, of course, they're going to be a lot bigger. So the few things that I've noticed and I have found with thicker beams is that they have more power. And I wrote the R too early, more power, and they are stiffer. So with a more powerful racket or a more thick beamed racket, you're usually gonna get a little bit more power from everything that I've seen and played with because of the stiffness. The thicker the actual racket is on the side, usually the better it is at just, I'll say, reflecting the power that is coming back at you that your opponent has hit to you and it is easier at reflecting that and just providing even more power or even more of a launch back uh, back across the court to your opponent. Now, these rackets, like I said, they do tend to be a little bit stiffer. That's one of the reasons where the power f comes from because the racket does not flex or bend as much when the ball hits the string. So you do have to sometimes be careful about arm issues with stiffer rackets or a thicker beamed racket because it can sometimes be a little bit harder on the arm since the racket doesn't flex as much to be a little bit easier on you. So now with thin beam rackets, you're usually going to get more control and more flexible. Now with a more control oriented racket, you do start to become a little bit more limited in your options with thin beamed rackets. They don't usually make them from what I've seen as, as general as they do the thick beam ones you can usually find a lot of different variations of thick beamed rackets in almost every single brand but most of the times you're usually going to find that the thin beam rackets tend to be a little bit heavier tend to be a little bit i'll say smaller head size and and that's because they're designed to help give you more control the smaller head size as well as partnered with a thin beam allows for everything to just be a little bit more helpful in giving you the control that you need. Whereas if you can generate your own power, that's where these tend to do very well, as well as being easy on your arm because they are flexible. If you are curious about your racket stiffness rating, then I would say you could probably check that just as a rough guess on a few, on a few most likely just go to the website that your racket is made from. So if you have a Babolat racket, use a Babolat, use Babolat's website, or if you have a Selenko racket, use a Selenko, use Selenko's website to see if they have the stiffness ratings on there. And that way you can see if your racket is going to be a little bit harder on the arm or if it's a little bit thinner on the arm, as well as to see the differences in the thicker and, thick and thin beams that are present now. Stiffness is not the topic of this video. That's a completely whole different thing. So we're just going to move right along and go into the three ranges for beam width. Now, these are what I have seen over working with tennis equipment for the past seven plus years. These tend to be usually more so, not, the, not necessarily that every single racket has to fall into this category, but just the majority that I've seen tend to fall into this. And so this is all measured in millimeters rather than anything else. That's just the, I believe it's the accepted metric for everything. 
And so that's where with the thin ones, you have an 18 to 21 millimeter beam. So that's usually on the thinnest side. You're think, thinking of like your, maybe some of your head prestiges, maybe even your Wilson blades and other control oriented rackets like that. Then here in the average, you have about a 22 to 24 millimeter beam. And then down here at the thick end of the range, you have a 25 to 28 millimeter beam. So from what I've seen in all my experience, if your racket tends to fall in between one of these three categories, it's usually either a thin beam, if you're between 18 to 21 millimeters, an average beam, which is 22 to 24 millimeters, and a thick beam, which is 25 to 28 millimeters. Now, with racket beam width, there are a few different things that can happen to where some rackets do not some rackets are not the all the same number the for the entire racket so that can be considered a constant beam because the racket is consistently say like 23 millimeters from the top of the racket which i actually have a racket right here so like the top or head of the racket would be 23 millimeters i'm just using this racket as an example i'm not saying this one is but say for our constant beam the racket is 23 millimeters it'd be up here It'd be 23 millimeters here in the main part of the racket where it is usually going to get the most action or the most force put onto it and then 23 millimeters down towards here towards the throat because where it is going to be one of or usually more flexible so that can be considered a constant beam because you have 23 millimeters around or going through the entirety of the racket then you do have some other types of rackets that are called or known as tapered beams to where you could have three different numbers up here. So like a different measurement for up here in the head, a different measurement for the thickness here in the middle, and a different measurement for here in the throat, depending on what the manufacturer was trying to accomplish with the racket. Usually you're going to find, or at least that I found, is that the majority of all the manufacturers have the thickest part here just so that it can be a little bit more stable of a racket. Whereas sometimes the more thin beamed rackets are not as stable if you're playing at someone that has a lot of power to it, just because the actual thinness of the racket, it might just be a little bit too thin. I'm not saying that's the case for everyone. I'm just saying that could be the case if you've noticed that when you go to hit a ball, you're like, okay, great. You go to say volley, and then the racket starts spinning in your hand. There's a number of reasons why that could happen, but one of them could be that the racket beam is too thin and you're just using a racket that may not be right for you at the time because the person hitting the ball back at you has a lot more power than what you're used to and either there wasn't the correct grip or something was going on. Maybe the racket doesn't have as much weight to it. Whole bunch of other things, but the beam width is important when looking into rackets because like I said, you have a multitude of different ways that it can affect your racket. But if you use these things that I've kind of highlighted here, you'll have a better understanding of what you're looking at when you actually look at a, whether it be a retail store or an actual tennis racket retailers website, just knowing and getting a general idea of what's going on with a racket's beam will help you to determine what the racket's actually gonna play like if you were to actually demo it or get it into your hands. Now, I can talk numbers here with you all day, but if you are wanting to actually just see what I'm talking about and put it to the test, then always be sure to demo a racket before you buy it, just so that way you have the ability to play with it, make sure it's the stiffness isn't gonna hurt you, you like the beam width of the racket, whether it's a little, whether it's a thinner, more average style or a thicker beam, and that way it plays well with your game, rather than trying to find something that is going to just be completely different, potentially hurt your arm because you're not used to it or the stiffness is different since it's a thicker beam or you're not used to how the racket plays because it's a thinner beam and then you have to adjust everything when you could have potentially just demoed the racket and then avoided all the problems because you're like, oh, this racket sucks, or oh, this racket's great. So with that being said, 
that's what I wanted to say today about beam width. I know it's a very important topic, especially when considering switching or buying a racket. So I wanted to cover, just give you a general idea of some things to look out for when you're actually looking into the thickness of the racket. Some people will obsess about it. Some people will be like, oh, I didn't know this was a thing. So that's where, so I would just wanted to make this so that you had a more general idea or just a better idea of what to look at and what you're looking at when you're actually looking at potentially switching rackets or even buying your first one, either or. So with that being said, if you like the video, leave a like on it. That thud you just heard was my racket falling because I had it next to my chair and it just fell because I moved. But if you like the video, leave a like on it. Comment down below any more questions that you may have about beam thickness or anything else. I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. And subscribe to the channel so that we can grow the channel, get the information out there from the people that have it to the people that need it. Because there's a lot of tennis misinformation in the tennis community. So I took it upon myself to make this channel so that we can get rid of that and get the information out there from the people that have it to the people that need it. So with that being said, as always, take care.